can. You need to give it to our guests. They need to wait a minute or two because you have to. Okay. Because then it's like, look. Because they have the people's perspective. It's going to Shh. It's a real life character. Can we go to their animation? 30 seconds. All right, sorry about that. I can't, our countdown is not working today, unfortunately. I'm so sorry about that. No worries here. All right, well, what I'm gonna do. So good evening, everyone. Today is Tuesday, November 14, 2023. Welcome to the Danny Perro Show here in Hamilton Radio. We're live on StreamYard tonight as well. I'm so honored to have the most amazing thousand hats you wear and many different positions that you're a part of. I'm just thankful to have you tonight. So I have Kent Wells here. Thank you again. My pleasure. Ken, so I wanted to get started a little bit with the interview tonight is before we talk about everything that you've done with everything in the industry as well. I'm so curious as to you being a songwriter and a musician, how you kind of got in the field for that when you were younger, like where that started for you. Well, I started out playing uh, instruments, playing guitar when I was quite young. My dad was a music enthusiast, and so he put guitars and fiddles in our hands very early age and so i uh, i started out playing i didn't have any any interest in writing songs in the beginning but then over time I, you know the creative bug hit me for that as well you know that's amazing wow so you had gotten an opportunity to do a little bit more of instrumentals in the yeah, industry I was, yeah when, i was like, at really, a younger age yeah, I was really into to music. I, I came to Nashville in the 80s to be a guitar player. That's all I ever wanted to do was just play guitar, you know. And uh, I did that for a long time before I got into songwriting. And and then I just kind of, through production, I morphed into writing. So I found myself in the room with artists a lot, needing songs. So I started kind of writing songs by default that way, you know, out of necessity. <laughs> Okay, to help them and get the idea and exposure. Yeah, you know, artists when you artists would hire me to record and produce, and they would need they would need songs. So, a bit of a delay. So I'm having. Yeah, I mean, it, you know exactly that's how it works. Especially in the industry. I know. I'm so sorry about the delay. I really apologize, Kent. It's all right. No worries. Can you hear me? Uh huh. Yeah. I hear you. Okay. So I wanted to get started then. So we spoke a little bit about your musician career and you being, you know, songwriter as well. And you're also a songwriter for yourself because you have a lot of music out there and different musicians, you know, incorporated and were a part of it as well. How about you being a producer? How did you get in the swing of that? I always was a, uh, uh, intrigued by the recording process and i played i played a lot of different instruments growing up so i was always fooling around with trying to record them and be like the one-man band you know i play the drums and then i would go and record the bass and oh. so i i did i did a lot of that okay. as, i did a lot of that as a kid and so i kind of just instinctively kind of learned about song structure and what the different instruments should be doing. And I was always interested in that. And then in the late nineties, I, I built a home here in Nashville and I built a studio in the basement and uh, started fooling around with it 
and I started recording some demos for songwriter buddies of mine. And some of them started getting cut on the radio. And so <clears throat> I was starting to kind of get encouraged to think, you know, I could really do this. And then in the early 2000s, I put a studio in uh, in downtown Nashville with Music Row. And and then Dolly came along and hired me to produce a record. And then the rest, is, I've been doing it ever since. Well, how did that's amazing because that was the opportunity that you kind of started with. And as you said in the beginning, you love doing guitar a lot, right? Like you loved being or playing guitar as a musician. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like a lot of that you incorporated in your like your career? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, first and foremost, in music, I'm a guitar player and, and that's that's my strength. I feel like that's the thing that I'm the most proficient at. And so everything I do kind of usually starts with a guitar in my hand, you know, uh, whether it's production, writing a song, arranging a song, uh, you know, putting a track together. Uh, it's, it's usually guitar based, you know, because that's my strongest instrument. That's how I think music is through the guitar. But, but, you know, uh, over the years I've, I've also gotten into a lot of other, instruments and and uh you know nowadays with with uh, the computerized recording there's a lot of a lot of different ways to build a track without it having an instrument in your hand so it just i just do everything out of necessity basically you know these days it's just what do i need what does the song need uh, i try to fish around and find it you know. find what music instruments missing yes <laughs> That's right. Well, I wanted to ask you, as you had said a little bit in the um, beginning of the interview, you said eventually then Dolly came and your career had jump started. Like, you know, it mm -hmm. went went off the, the reins basically from that. How then do you think, like when she reached out to you, was it more of her reaching out like, hey, can you be my producer? Can you help me work on some music and be behind my tracks? Yeah, I had been uh, I had played guitar for her on several of her albums prior to this at th at through the 90s. And um, I had also gone out on tour playing guitar for her in the 80s and 90s. And so she was working on a bluegrass record back in in 2000, I think it was or 2001. And she had fired a producer and she had asked me to come okay. over and help with that. And so I did. And we hit it off real good. And she liked the way I worked in the studio as a producer. And so we, since then, she's used me for just about all of her records for the past 20, 20 something years as producer. That's amazing. Wow. And you have an amazing bond and connection with her too. And I think as being a producer, that's even awesome when you have the bond with your musician. Yeah, it, it's definitely a good uh, kind of a, 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 a good union. You know, we're, we're kind of her yin is my yang. I, I do, I have strengths, you know, as a musician that she doesn't have and she's got her own superpowers <laughs> as an artist, you know, and, so I, I'm able, I'm, I'm a good, uh, I'm a good right hand man for her. I can help her through just about any type of musical situation. And she appreciates that. And as you probably know, she does all kinds of musical adventures, you know, from Broadway to movies, to pop and rock and country. We just did a rock album last year that I'm excited about. Oh yes. Yeah, we've done, We've done a lot of different styles of music over the years, and I think that's why she, she and I work well together because I'm pretty versatile, you know. Yeah, well, I love that. I love that you guys communicate and you get on a great level, you know, especially for great music that's coming out and billboard charts and top hits and everything like that. It's mm -hmm. amazing for both of you to skyrocket like that, you know, 
So congratulations. That's awesome. I wish you so much more luck in the industry. Well, thank you. I appreciate that very much. Well, Kent, I'm so excited to talk about as well for having you because you're, like I said, you're amazing. You do so much for everyone. And this is the time for you to give back. This is the time for you to officially be interviewed and be like, hey, world, this is what I'm known for. If you don't know who I am, you know, versus mm -hmm. just being a guitarist from behind. Uh, the yeah. Um, I wanted to say I'm excited to give the opportunity. Excited to give the opportunity to you. Uh, to talk about this amazing new album that's re being released this Friday for Miss Dolly Parton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the album's called Rockstar. Um, they've been hyping it up pretty big, I've noticed, on social media and everything. Uh, it's it's 30 songs. Yes, all it's over a four, it's, a, it's a four box set, four album box set. Uh, it's got wow. an amazing, an amazing, uh, cast of, of artists that are collaborating with us, Paul McCartney, Sting, Ringo Starr, Pink, Miley Cyrus, uh, Brandy Carlisle, I mean, even Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. I mean, it's, wow. uh, it, it's pretty vast. A lot of collaborations. A lot of collaborations. And uh, it's really cool. It was, it was a dream project for me to get to produce because I'm such a fan of all those people. You know, I grew up, I grew up in the seventies playing all that music that I love. And, uh, and Dolly, you know, when we would ask people, do they want to be a part of it? They would jump at the chance because of her and her, you know, her great reputation and everybody loves Dolly. So I really got to do some amazing things and collaborations and I'm excited for, for everybody to hear it and see what they think about it. I'm really excited for it as well. I mean, it sounds amazing and it's going to be out Friday, like on all platforms. Is it coming out oh, in yeah. a box set as well? Yeah, it's vinyl. You know, you can get the vinyl. They've been pre-ordering that already, but uh, it'll be out in CDs in all the stores, vinyl. Of course, it'll be streaming and uh, Sirius XM is even uh, creating a Dolly Rockstar channel that's going to uh, launch on Wednesday tomorrow on Sirius channel 14. So check that out. If wow. anybody wants a sneak peek at it. But yeah, that's pretty exciting. I've done a lot of albums, but I've never had one where they made it, they created their own series channel for it. So <laughs> I feel pretty special with that. Hey, it's Dolly. That's the reason. It's, it's Dolly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Anything for Dolly. I wanted to also say with this album, where can people like purchase it or can they download it on all platforms? Yeah, it, it'll be on every streaming platform. Uh, it'll be in Walmart, Target, Cracker Barrel. Uh, it'll be everywhere. It's a major, major campaign. So, yeah, there, you'll be sick of seeing it, I'm sure, before it's over with. Do you know exactly, Kent, if it's going to be on her website? Is it going to be on her website as well? That I don't know. I'm sure it will. I, I'm, I can't confirm that, but I, I'm pretty sure it will, yeah. Okay. I would think so, too, but I was just curious. I didn't know if it would be, but. I would think so. But I'm and I wanted sure. to ask you, Kent, behind the scenes of doing this, behind the scenes of doing this, the 30 track, has it been fun? Has it been tiring? Has it been exciting? Kind uh -huh. of what do you feel like was going through your head when you had all these musicians coming in for collab? Yeah, it, it was all of the above. It was fun. It was exhausting. It was frustrating. And it was exciting. <laughs> it, it was all of that. And it was but it was a it was a dream project to, for a producer to get to do, you know, because I got to work with all those greats and I got to, as, you know, 
I just I got to do some rock and roll. I'm mostly known as a country producer, so I've all you know. I grew up playing that stuff, so I always wanted to, an opportunity. I always wondered if I would have an opportunity to to work with Aerosmith and people like that. And it was like, yeah, it was really good feeling to get to do that and to get to kind of kind of stretch out into that that genre. Wow, even Tyler, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. There was never a dull moment. I'll, t I'll put it that way. It was, it was always, it was But it's also fun for you because it was opportunity. Never a dull moment. Yeah. And it, and it was fun because like I said, it, it, it pushed me, it pushed me and Dolly outside of our, of our normal, you know, uh, boundaries, I guess you'd say, or, or musical comfort levels. We, we got pushed, you know, and it, it, we got challenged and it was great. It's fun. That's what you want in this business, you know. I love that. I think that's awesome. Yeah, it was a lot. Yep. Of fun. That's the big thing that the next push is what are you bringing into the new year? You know, so with this new rock album that she has, that's going to come out the end of this year, technically this Friday for everyone that's tuning in for the platform. What do you feel like we'd be bringing into the new year? Do you think maybe a tour she might work on? Not a hundred percent sure on that. I'm, I'm, there's been no talk of a tour, which is just a, kind of disappointing to me. I would love to see her go out and tour this. I'd like to go play these songs live, but um, she's working on a Broadway. She's working on her Broadway play of her life story, and I'm involved in that. And then. Um, who knows? I mean, and of course, I'm working with other artists uh, as well. So I don't know exactly what, as it pertains to Dolly. But I, I'm just hoping that the album will get will do really well and, and get, you know, get get some exposure uh, in that realm and might 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 motivate her to, act, to actually get up and go play some shows and, and tour it a little bit by summertime. <laughs> I was gonna say maybe she's waiting on to see how it goes, and then yeah, exactly. She might want maybe so, maybe so. Wow, that's amazing! So she has a Broadway coming up too into the new year. I know that's not well, something to talk about. We're talking about her album, but yeah, later but, down the line, she's working on Broadway. Yeah, too. well, she, she's right now in the early stages of writing and uh, putting the music together for a Broadway play version of her life story in song. And it's really good. I've gotten to work on the initial round of tracks with her recently in the studio. And it's really great. Uh, I've enjoyed that. And, and it's, it's going to be, it's going to be great. It'll, it, I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll be a pretty big smash on Broadway. A couple of years out from it actually coming to fruition, but it's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. In the works. Yeah, yeah. God, congratulations so, to her. That sounds amazing. Wow. She yeah. always has something up next, doesn't she? She's amazing. She's perpetual motion. She never sits still. You yeah. really get the, the most best opportunity out of her. Yeah. Yeah, I get to really – she she inspires me a lot, you know, I, I, because at her age to be as vibrant and as – as hardworking as she is and as passionate about what she's doing, you know, nobody, she doesn't have to get up and do all this stuff. She just dreams it up and goes and does it. You know, that's, that's a, she's a good role model for, for people. Manifestor. Mm -hmm. True. We, you, I've loved Dolly ever since I was a little kid. She's the, she's a role model to everyone out there. Mm -hmm. Such an icon. Mm -hmm. Yes. She is, yeah. For sure. You get the opportunity to work with her, create all these amazing tracks that you're still a part of. You have the best role job in the, uh -huh. in the industry. You know that. Yeah, I, that's what I tell everybody. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it, you know. Well, you know, it's, it's still really exciting that we get the opportunity to talk to you about any of this stuff today. Especially, you know, oh, you getting a chance to be on tour with Reba, Dolly. Yeah, those were my early days back in the 80s and 90s. I I used to just 
play guitar for everybody and anybody. So that's what I, I wound up touring with Reba and Kenny Rogers and Brooks and Dunn and a bunch of the artists of the eighties and nineties and, and Dolly too. I was touring with her off and on back then too. So uh, that's how I kind of got my start in the business being a guitar slinger. So were you, were you Reba McIntyre's guitar musician, guitarist? Yeah, I did. Yeah. for Like that's how you met her, with her? About seven years I toured and played on her records and played in her band, played guitar in her band. And all of that. It was great. Good times. Back in her heyday in the 90s when she was top of the charts, you know. Those were good times because everything we did. A, a lot of the musicians are still definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny. I, I, it's funny how fast, because I'm 60 now. I think I was 30 when I started playing for Reba. And you know, like, like 30 years goes by in the blink of an eye when you're having fun, you know, playing. <laughs> hey, your age doesn't show but a number. Mm, thank you. That's the lighting's bad. I'm getting under the right lighting. You'll you'll see how old I am. But yeah, I, but I had a I had so many many great memories playing with all those great country stars. I got to tour all over the world. You know, as a young man, it was it was a very exciting time. You know. What was very exciting for you in the beginning of your part of your like career? whether you were working with different musicians or different, uh, you know, yeah. celebrities into the industry. It, it was the most, the most exciting part early on was just feeling like, well, well, it was getting to play with all of these fantastic musicians that we have around here in Nashville and feeling like I belong, you know, like I was good enough. The feeling of affirmation that, Hey man, these guys really, you know, dig what I do and they're hiring me and, and, and then I'm getting to play with musicians that I grew up listening to that are heroes of mine. You know, that was, that was, that was all really fun and exciting as a young guy in his twenties, you know, and thirties. That, that was fun. It doesn't get any better than that, actually. I, you know, just being, just feeling like you're one of the guys on a, in a, in a, in a really, uh, a really, uh, you know, high end of kind of high end of the music business. That that was fun for me. Just 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 making the team. You know, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. You still just are feeling like just feeling like I belonged there. You know, that that was fun. yeah. So you felt very honored. Yeah, yeah. I felt lucky, fortunate, honored, all those things. You know. I think that's amazing. You are such an amazing person, Kent. Did you know that? <laughs> I try. Well, uh, no, I don't know that. I'm, I'm lucky. I'm fortunate. I got to do a lot of, a lot of great things in my life so far. And I, I hope I've got a lot more to do too. In spite of my gray hair, my gray beard. I oh, I, I'm sure you do. You have so much going uh -huh. on with Dolly, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. So, Kat, do you have social media where people can follow you about your production company as well? <laughs> I am the worst social media guy in the world. I have a, I, I do have an Instagram. I'm never on there. I do have a Facebook. Uh, you can, they can find me on there. I'm not a very I'm not very into social media only because I'm that age where I kind of missed that whole and and that what I like to do on social media is get on there and share pictures of my grandkids <laughs> not talk about my my business Aww. but um but yeah anybody wants to to holler at me just they can go on my my Facebook page or my Instagram and uh say something i just i'm hardly on there i know i hardly ever post or anything but uh i'll i'll, I'll try to i'll try is to it just it. Kent wells yeah yeah um 
my Instagram and, and then my Facebook. Yeah, just look look me up on Facebook, Kent Wells. I think my production company, I think they have one. Uh, Kent Wells Productions has a page too, if I remember right. But like I say, I'm never on there. So if you message me, give me a day or two to get back to you. <laughs> but I'll try to do better. I'll try to do better. I promise. <laughs> no, no problem at all. You have so much you're handling and dealing with, you know, so I don't think anyone should be upset if you're not responding to a message. You're busy. Yeah, I, I will always respond. It just might be slow. Mm -hmm. You are a man of many talents. Mm -hmm. well, thank you. Well, I've sure enjoyed talking to you. Good luck with the rest of your show. How long are you on? Well, Ken, I just want to say. So normally my show is about an hour, but because I had you the most incredible person in the world, I wanted to make it short because you have the busiest time of your life and you're probably tired from all your busy day. Hello? I think he froze. Hi, everyone. Sorry, there are some technical difficulties coming in. We're just waiting on Ken to get back. We're going to get ready to end the show shortly. Um, thank you all so much for tuning in. Kent, are you there? Sorry, guys. Just give me a second. We have a little delay. Okay. And he's out. Look, I just want to say thank you all so much for tuning in. I had the most wonderful person, Kent Wells, today. I appreciate the time. I appreciate him being here with me with his crazy busy schedule. Uh, I just want to say thank you to Paula for giving us the opportunity to have him, my wonderful manager, Christopher, for scheduling. And thank you all so much. Make sure you guys stay tuned every Tuesday. We are live from 6.30 to 7.30. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I'll see you next week.